Hello, my SOC universe. Welcome to the Northwestern Europe, Northwestern Europe um, weekend review. England and the Netherlands with a heavy focus on the Premier League, uh, for sure. Uh, before we get to the results, uh, briefly, I decided to wear West Ham because. If I would have put them the way we are where they belong, they would have ended up in this slot, right, right here. So that's the one slot that usually is reserved for a good team, but it's still a little bit out of the picture. So I said, let's wear West Western because I didn't really feel like wearing CD. As you will see, they just had a big result. So yeah, I had to double the top two up there and rearrange a little bit. And West Ham it is really nice jersey with the old crest, which I also like. A lot better um, and with that we also get to the he headlines and let's stay with the West Ham why am I wearing it because West Ham moving fifth spot it's the last he he headline but I think it's a quite big one other than that Liverpool dropping points and sending uh, Jurgen Klopp off into a rage uh, we have the great Cavani coming off the bench saving United and Chelsea Spurs cancelling each other out I think those are the main headlines Let's move to the games uh, we had on Friday evening. Crystal Palace more or less dominating the game, but Newcastle scores the goals. Newcastle, again, as they are prone to do, steal another game. And Thieving Magpies comes into mind when I think about that. And I have Newcastle's same sympathy, so I don't mean this necessarily as a diss, but um, I thought it is fitting. Brighton, Liverpool. First things first, I think the result was deserved. I think the all, overall, all the, the, the two teams, Brighton especially for first half, was a bad, the better team with Liverpool only having a disallowed uh, goal by um, Salah. So, yeah, Brighton even missing a penalty through Mope, uh, having other ch chances. Then Diogo Jota, and that's one of the, the buys of the season, I have, have to say. And Jurgen Klopp really has a good feeling what players to buy. I mean, most of his players. Yes, this one was more was maybe overvalued, but uh, what I admire about Klopp is that he takes players that have been performing decently at other clubs and then transforms them into stars and Jota is bound to be the next next one. And the finish he had was a typical Jota finish. Um, so it all looks very well set for Liverpool. Another win. Yes, the kick of time I didn't mind, but then they concede a penalty. Probably should have conceded another one. They had also another goal disallowed through money for offside. So they concede the penalty in the 93rd and Jurgen Klopp goes off on yeah five substitutes playing in the early game uh, after we played Wednesday evening. It's not fair, it's not fair, it, it's a fair. I have to say that I am with Klopp on all of these points. The one thing I don't like is the way he goes about them. Uh, yes, he's, a, he's still ang ang angry about the loss and probably that makes him a little bit more furious than usual. I also think here he, he has a point. I think everyone else in Europe, they use five substitutes. Why don't they use it in the Premier League? I understand some of the arg argumentation of the lower teams, but as a counter argument, I have to say, yes, they have deeper squads, they have better squads, but they would have better squads anyway. They play in Europe and it's a grueling schedule. And I think for Liverpool, the uh, the, the one thing I think um, sets really Jürgen Klopp off is that the mounting number of injuries and that he feels that he has to give up and he played against Atalanta, a second string squad. So, take away. As I said, I'm siding with Klopp. I'm not siding with the way he's going about it there. Manchester City thumped Burnley. And again, that's why I didn't want to wear the jersey. That's why I went with West Ham. Uh, Riyad Mahrez scoring a hat-trick. It was too easy. I think it's the third time in a row the Manchester City beats Burnley 5-0. Uh, could have been even worse because uh, they had a goal disallowed. So yeah, um, not much more that I can say. I, it's a typical Manchester City beats a lower uh, level, level opponent. It's not much that I want to talk about. I actually saw a good portion of Everton against Leeds. Uh, from the get-go, the most interesting thing is what Leeds was playing in uh, with those maroon-colored jerseys, uh, which actually didn't look all that bad, but um, at first I had to really see, uh, is Leicester playing at Everton? Hmm? No, was Leeds playing at Everton, so uh, <laughs> as I expected, but it, uh, it, it had me a little bit aghast at, at, at the moment. Um, I also was wondering, you know, 
I know Everton Blue with white shorts wouldn't have been a conquer combination in there out of the existing kits that uh, Leeds could have used to play there, but maybe it would have not been as clean as if you show up uh, there in a completely new kit, which was not in the jersey review. The game was all Leeds. Uh, at the beginning and a little bit to the end, I thought that Everton had some chances, but most of it was all Leeds uh, who uh, hit the woodwork at least once, uh, and then Rafinha gets a late goal when I really thought uh, this will turn out to be a goalless draw. The biggest problem that Leeds have, they play this super intense game and it's all fun and it's all fun to watch and so on, but they don't convert the many chances that they actually have. If they do, it can get ugly, but it can get ugly on the other, so it can back backfire. It's, it's really, it's almost like Russian roulette a little bit. But yeah, the goal by Rafinha was really nicely taken because he took it such such a way to pick, but there's no way to see it, although it was outside of the box. Uh, the less said about West Brom against Sheffield United, the better. Uh, West Brom getting the first win of the season. Sheffield United doesn't. Sheffield United had to having chances to equalize at least, if not get more, but don't. And so I think Sheffield United is being found out at the moment. We need to definitely talk about Southampton against United or Saints against United. Uh, because this was a tale of two halves. The first half was... We, if it would have ended after... 45 minutes, we have thought, what a great performance by Southampton again. Uh, and Ole, you, you're the death of United, out with you. Bednarek and James Ward Prowse with a nice free kick uh, scored the goals. Ward Prowse also assists the first one. But then, Jean Sosha puts in Cavani for Greenwood at halftime. And like Cavani descending from the heavens, saves United. Um, he first assists Bruno Fernandes in the 59th. Then, in, and that I didn't see, but then I, I joined, I saw the, saw the, but then I joined and I see how Bruno Fernandes takes a shot and uh, Cavani basically jumps into it, head, 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 I mean, he has such a feel for the goal. Uh, even if he's, he's a fit, it's just amazing. I always like Cavani ever since he's now, not pretty, I think he's an excellent, excellent striker. And if he can get get fit, I, I know many called foul on United in a way. Yeah, why do we get an old striker? I think Cavani is excellent. If he, I think he also takes good care of himself. And then he scores the winner late in stoppage time. And yeah, Cavani, the big hero. And for me, probably one of the biggest storylines of this weekend. Uh, it should have been that we talk a lot about Chelsea Spurs, but there was not much happening. In the build-up to that game uh, or over the week, I was kind of convincing myself, yeah, Chelsea is too much to handle for Spurs. Uh, they might not be overall as great of a side as Manchester City, but the way they're playing, they have a lot more uh, forward, a lot more penetration going forward, which uh, City obviously don't have. And so seeding deep will, uh, will suit uh, Spurs not as much as Chelsea. However, uh, the two cancel each other out. I think it could have been an open game if the goal by Werner in the 10th minute would have counted. Uh, that, that was a great goal, but I also think it would have maybe meant that Chelsea wins 2 or 3 nil, which kind of was the result that everyone was, what was going for. But the two sides really cancel each, out, each other out nicely. I mean, Spurs in the second half was really, really hang, hang deep, dangerously deep. And yes, they would have had, Chelsea had some chances, but I think the best chances came towards the end of the game when a uh, Giroud doesn't get much um, force behind the attempted lob over Yoris, and then uh, late on when Kuzuma misplaces the ball and it comes to Lo Celso and he has three options and chooses the fourth one which is take a shot off the goal. Uh, Mourinho must be fuming because he could, really could have stolen the game right there and then. But I have to say, uh, despite Spurs hanging deep, you always had the threat with Son and Kane. And it, but it also speaks to Chelsea that you could, this was maybe one of the first teams that really could keep those two uh, in check. And you know, with Thiago Silva and Mandi uh, in goal, they look solid. So it was a very interesting game, but it was not a great game. Uh, and it ends nil-nil. Yeah, all the top games are kind of downers at the moment in England. Um, I didn't see anything of Arsenal Wolves. I think it was overshadowed by Raul Jimenez, uh, you know, hitting, butting heads with um, David Luiz, fracturing his skull. 
Doesn't sound fun. Uh, David Lewis playing for a half uh, with a turban and you know all the blood gushing through. Uh, did not look pretty. But Wolves gets the win. Uh, they twice take the lead in the first half and Arsenal comes a little bit too late. And again, Arsenal, um, they seem to hit this... They may start out nicely, they may finish the season, but always there's a mid-season slump where you think they're really going nowhere and it doesn't matter the manager. Uh, I think there's a bigger structural problem there, my personal opinion there. Um, yesterday in the evening, Leicester City losing at home to Fulham was a big, big shock. Uh, and I'm worried about Leicester now. I mean, I said it, they lose against Liverpool. They have to see how this, it was not a good performance. Uh, but Leicester full and fully deserving the win. Getting the two goals through Lukman and Cavallero, who converts a penalty in the first half. And there was not much coming from Le Le Leicester. I think there was uh, one by Madison uh, chance, but I think that, that was that from Wall Wall, also in the highlights. Um, Lukman also, uh celebrated the life of Baba Diop, who uh, passed away uh, a few days ago, a couple of days ago, I think. Uh, the great Senegal striker who scored the winner against France in the 2002 World Cup. So yeah, Leicester. With a win, you could have looked strong at the moment. I am not so sure anymore. Um, and then West Ham beating Aston Villa. In and yeah, uh, it was a weird game because I thought that Aston Villa for most of the time was the better team. It's just that West Ham twice scored early. Uh, Ogbonna in the second, Grealish equalizes with a, a thunderous shot, but they took a deflection. I think that's why it didn't go in. Uh, they had many, many, many chances, but then, you know, uh, Ben Rama comes on in the 46, uh, Sebastian Allaire, and uh, Ben Rama already sees Bowen to make it a 46 2 1, and that was the difference. Aston Villa, if they convert their chances, Namely, most, uh, for, 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 first and foremost, uh, Oli Watkins needs to convert the penalty. Uh, they take at least a point out, out of there that would have been deserved. Uh, later, there was Oli Watkins' goal. Uh, this disallowed it. It's shell shot the measuring. Because the sleeve now does not count, uh, counts as a part that you can score a goal with the. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, I have, I have to say. But credit to Aston. Yes, they probably didn't deserve the win yesterday. But we all. I, I remember at the beginning of, of October, they say, we have a really tough streak ahead, ahead of us. It might be a long uh, time for West Ham until we pick a point. And then they only lose to, Liv to Liverpool, getting really great results. And if we look now in the table, they find themselves in fifth spot. Huge credits to West Ham. I mean, that we did not expect at the beginning of the season, uh, to be honest. Top four remain unchanged, but uh, it's clear that Leicester, who with the win, as they, they could have gotten right where Liverpool is, uh, stay out, out, out there. So it's really the top three. And Manchester City is now the favorite. Uh, having a game in hand, with Liverpool dropping points, they again flip flop the percentages. So it's whenever one of them draw, 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 draw points, the other one get, becomes favorite. Uh, we have to really see when everything evens out. And as I said in my La Liga review yesterday, I probably should do a relative table and not this absolute table that everyone sees. Would make it probably a little bit more even everything. On the bottom, Sheffield United really looking bad. I think they have been found out. Um, and I think they are. They will probably go go down, as will West Brom, although Burnley is now ahead and, and Fulham. I think, as I said last time, the, those, those four, I don't think that uh, anyone else will go going there. It seems to be very, very decisive. Overall, the Premier League, I mean, Brighton is hovering, but they play well enough that I think they will pick up enough points. The rest is rather, rather, rather even. Next weekend, the big one is the North London Derby. Although I don't expect a good game. I actually, actually think I have a few more earmarks that might be interesting. I mean, I'm not sure we'll watch, but Villa against New, Newcastle, I want to see what uh, if Newcastle can steal another one. Uh, because I, I, and I actually enjoy watching Villa in many ways. Um, I think West Ham against United is an early sleeper. Chelsea leads. Sounds like a fun game. Uh, come, 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 come up. Although Leeds is not scoring that many goals, but they still they have this intensity up there. So I'm uh, look, looking for Devon. And then Liverpool Wolves also does not sound all that bad. And then we have a South Coast Derby on Monday evening, might also be fun. Um, in the Netherlands, didn't see anything 
I see Ajax continuing to score many goals, only five. One is against Emmen. Um, we had Vitesse beating Sita 2 0, Feyenoord dropping points against Utrecht, um, uh, AZ winning against Heracles, PSV getting a win over Sparta. So in the table, uh, the top two remain the same, not much changed. Ajax having scored the most goals of any one in Europe's top leagues. But you know, the Eredivisie, if you just look, look at it, just, just look at the point, it's kind of a three tiered league. We have Ajax until Feyenoord is kind of in one league, then we have Twente until Groningen, that's the next pack and the rest is all bad teams, more or more or less. So the 18 team league is maybe a little bit too big in the Netherlands there because there's a really, really, real draw drop of the IAC, even the ratings. Um, Emmen at the moment is last and it will be a dogfight down there as well. As for the next round, I think Ajax 20 is the big one. Um, Feyenoord plays against Heracles, Vitesse against Zwolle, uh, Z against Groningen. That could also be an in interesting one. I wonder whether Ajax Rom is coming back. And then, yeah, Herrenveen against PSV. That's that. Well, that ends my Northwestern Europe uh, review. Please let me know what you thought about the games this weekend. If you want to add any, any, anything uh, to what I said or if I missed anything, would we'll be happy to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!